Mindy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a wrap up of all the books I read in June. I managed to read 11 books in June and I read 2,320 pages which averages out to 77 pages per day which is a little bit lower than last month but still pretty good. I read four physical books, five ebooks, and three audiobooks. And I am now at 51 books for the year, which means that I am on track and even a tiny bit ahead of schedule for meeting my 100 books for the year read which is pretty good since I was in a major reading slump from January through March, so we've really turned that around. I read quite a few books that were published in 2019 this month, and most of them I want to do separate reviews on, so I won't talk about them as much in this wrap-up because I want to go more in-depth in my individual reviews. So I'm going to start with those books and just mention them, what they're about, and my rating. First one was The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. This is a horror sci-fi novel taking place on another planet in a cave and it's about one person all by yourself exploring the cave with one person kind of backing her up off site helping her get through it very claustrophobic and some creepy things happen and you find out more and more um, stuff that you didn't start out knowing about the mission that gets really interesting. I gave this book four stars. I thought it was entertaining overall, but I wish it had more creepy moments and more of a horror element throughout. Next, I read Dear Laura by Gemma Moore. This is a novella, and it's also the first book I finished for the Horror Awards Reading Project. I And this one is about a creepy pen pal. It's a, a very sinister story. Uh, very, very creepy. And I gave it five stars. I also read The Deep by River Solomon, which is a fantasy story that follows a group of sea-dwelling people that are like mermaids that are descended from women that were thrown overboard from slave ships while they were giving birth. And the main character keeps all of the memories for her group. Um, inside of her has to deal with the pain of what their people have gone through and how she deals with that. This was a very beautiful, magical story that I absolutely loved and I gave it five stars. I also read A Spectral Hue by Craig Lawrence Gidney. Check out this cover. It's wonderful and it actually describes the book very well. Surprisingly, what could that mean? But this book follows a group of artists that have been compelled to make their art based around a color of a flower that grows in this certain area 
in a swamp. It starts off seeming like a very normal story and things start to get more and more bizarre as uh, supernatural, supernatural elements are introduced and things get really interesting. I gave Spectral Hue four stars. Next I read um, The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. I already made a video about this book. This is uh, my new favorite classic. It's freaking fantastic. Please read it. It's amazing. This is a classic revenge story of epic proportions about a young man who is really on top of his game. His life is going really well and some people don't like that very much and they put him down a lot of pegs and end up getting him arrested and he is in prison for many many years and then when he gets out of prison he gets his revenge and it is a very satisfying story that is really fun to read from start to finish. I can't recommend highly enough. I gave it five stars, obviously. Next I have a book that was recently published in 2019, but I don't think that I'll be doing an individual review for it. And that is The Half Freaks by Nicole Cushing. This is a just a little 100 page novella that follows uh, Harry Myers as he fumbles his way through trying to plan a funeral for his mother and things get very odd and peculiar. Uh, I don't think I'll make an individual review for this one because I have very <laughs> mixed feelings about it. I loved certain parts about it and didn't like others, but by that um, description of what this book is about, I thought that I would love this book because I love books with the theme of grief in them, so I thought this would be the perfect story for me. I would describe this book as bizarre, uh, absurdist maybe, and really in uncomfortable to read at certain points. There was some grief in here, but I had so much trouble uh, feeling anything but hatred for the main character because Harry is the worst. I hate him. I hate him. There are some very uncomfortable scenes of him thinking horrible thoughts about women while that uh, turn him on and no, no, that is creepy AF. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot read a book about you, Harry. I'm sorry. Uh, there were some sections like the beginning and the end where the author, Nicole Cushing, writes herself into the story and kind of breaks the fourth wall and is writing about writing this story about this <laughs> character. And those parts were awesome. I love her voice. She's really funny. She's really brave and not afraid to go anywhere in her writing. I really like... Uh, so... Nicole, I really like you. It's not you, it's it's him. It's it's him. I, I just I can't I can't get behind a character like this. The there were some supernatural elements that started to happen in this book. They were really unique and uh, props for coming up with something so strange and unique and yeah. Um I would have liked this book a lot more if Harry wasn't such a garbage person. Don't be like Harry.
also I think I would have liked it more if it amped up the emotion a little bit more. Uh, even an unlikable character can be a sympathetic one if there is enough emotion portrayed, but really <laughs> the absurdity and kind of the over top over the top reactions and and things just I didn't feel sad I felt eh. but I seem to be in the minority I'm one of very few that Mark uh, rated this three stars uh, most people have been four or five stars so I'm just a weird one that can't get past Harry's awfulness I guess however <sighs> Nicole's humor and bizarre writing style has me very intrigued to try something else. I also have a sick gray laugh up on my shelves to check out by her and I'm actually kind of excited to see what a longer novel will be like by her. Oh, I hope that it has the bizarre elements, the absurdist elements like sure bring it on things that make me uncomfortable, okay, but hopefully there will be at least some characters that I can get behind and um, feel something for, I guess. And that is all. Another one that I will, will be doing a review for is The Devil Aspect by Craig Russell, which is a psychological horror following a psychologist working at a mental institution in Czechoslovakia. This is right before World War II, right before um, Hitler takes over, and this mental institution ha is ha housing the Devil Six, which are all murderers, that claim that the devil made them do it um, and they all have their own stories about how they have been forced to do things or that it wasn't them it was this and a demon or something else outside of them but all the evidence points to they actually did it it's a mystery because there's also another murderer that is actively killing around the city. So there is also a detective that is trying to find the current killer. All of the, it goes through all of the stories of the Devil Six, like all their six stories, and they are all really, really disturbing and creepy and horror goodness. And I really enjoyed them. The serial killer on the loose, also very creepy. This was a really fun, creepy, psychological uh, mystery horror novel. And I loved every bit of it, really. I gave it four stars. Next, I listen to Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb, which is book three in the Fi Farseer trilogy, so I finished a series. Hooray! Good for me. <laughs> it's one of my goals for this year is to finish series. The Farseer trilogy is one of my favorite fantasy series. It follows Fitz, who was a bastard son of a prince living in a in a kingdom but pretty much outcasted because he's a bastard and learning skills for the kingdom and all of the adventures he goes on and him as a small child growing all the way up and this was the conclusion to his big life quest. It had a really great 
group of adventurers with him in this book that I absolutely loved. This did not disappoint, and I gave it five stars. I also listened to The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert, which follows the entire life of Alma Whitaker. So it is a historical fiction following a real person who was a scientist who studied plants and mosses and it goes all the way from pre-adolescence through her entire life. It was a long one and a long book about a scientist who studies moss. I wouldn't think this would be my thing, but it was so well written and full of emotion and her life was actually really fascinating and I love listening to it. it. It's a great book, guys. It's a really great book. That's all there is to say about it and I gave it five stars. I also read The Matrix by Jonathan A. Cliff. This is a Harper Horror mass market paperback. It was published in 1995, an English horror writer, and The Matrix, I now know for certain, has nothing to do with the movie, which I figured it wasn't because this is a horror novel and that's a sci-fi movie, but it did come out pretty much right before the movie did, so just weird. Anyway, uh, this is about a, a man who is studying the occult and old books about the occult and he finds this volume in the library that is the Matrix. <laughs> and it leads him on a very dark twisted adventure and it causes a lot of serious problems. So it's about a book that can bring people back to life. The stakes were very high in this one and that book and the man who finds Andrew, our main character, uh, because of the book. Very creepy. Very, very scary book. Um, I notice a lot of things I have seen before in movies or books. Uh, tropey. A little bit tropey. But this is an older book. Who knows? Maybe this is where it all began, but I don't know. <laughs> but it was a good bit of sat satanic panic fun. And I gave it four stars. Last book that I read in June was The Nest by Gregory A. Douglas, which is an older horror novel as well that was featured in Paperbacks from Hell. And it is about killer cockroaches. That's gross. <laughs> and let me tell you, this book was gross. It was gross. I do not want to die of cockroach attack, like, ew, ew. So it's about a group of cockroaches that get altered by living in a chemical filled dump and acquire a taste for blood and change to be able to kill people quite easily. Ew. <laughs> Again, the stakes were really high. There was a very large body count. I didn't know how they were going to find a way to fight such a small enemy. I thought that the story was, well, really well paced and a lot of fun all the way through and I really enjoyed everything about it and I gave it four stars.
those are the 11 books that I finished in June. If you like this video, you can hit like and subscribe, and I will be back very soon with another book-related video. Thanks. Bye.